every morning in towns and villages and cities in every country on earth there are people who wake up and make the world work and make the world better sometimes they speak sometimes they sing sometimes they dream sometimes they act sometimes they stand out sometimes they stand up we call these people leaders we call these people sister mother grandmother daughter the world does not suffer from a lack of leadership the world suffers from a crisis of vision every morning every day we are told we need leaders we need heroes every morning every day they are right here all we have to do is open our eyes all we have to do is see them and acknowledge them and honor them and raise them up the world needs the wisdom the strength the courage the vision of all its people not half of its people all every morning every day the sound of progress is the girl who says i can the sound of change is the woman who says we will the sound of our future is the sound of millions of women saying we are here on this morning on this day we will be heard we will be seen we will do the work of mothers and grandmothers sisters and daughters we will sing the world awake we will move the world forward we will lead Do you know what happens when African women from the north, the south, the east, and the west come together in one place? Do you know what happens? We take the world by storm. It is as though the universe knew that we were coming here and wanted to give us a grand entrance. The sun, the rain, the snow, the wind came together to welcome us to this place. Why? Because we take the world by storm. It is my honor to welcome you to this place for the African Women's Leadership Conference, a partnership between MasterCard Foundation and Wellesley College. We hope that during this time that you will enjoy yourself, that you will build great relationships, that you will meet new people, and that you will learn how to strengthen yourself so that you can move the world forward and take the world by storm. It is my great pleasure now to welcome you to listen to one of the MasterCard Foundation scholars. Her name is Sandra Ahiming, and she is a sophomore. Sandra is the Scholars Council representative for Wellesley College. And it is my honor to present her to you. And as Sandra is coming to the stage, I also want to let you know that our MC, Ms. Joey Cole, is on her way here. She is taking the storm in stride and coming here so that she can join us. Nothing is going to stop her from making it here today. And so please join me in welcoming to the stage Sandra Ahemming. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandra Himen Amponsa. I am a sophomore from Ghana, and I am the scholars representative here at Wellesley College. 
On behalf of the MasterCard Foundation Scholars at Wellesley, it is an honor for me to welcome you to the African Women's Leadership Conference, the first of its kind on our campus. My colleagues and I were very excited to suggest speakers like my own countrywoman, Farida Bajay, and all the great speakers gracing this special occasion. It is an amazing feeling to be under the same roof with all these phenomenal women breaking glass ceilings on the continent. As the scholars representative, I've had the privilege of being the voice of the scholars community in my school, and also serving on the Scholars Council to promote its vision of transformative leadership by creating opportunities for engagement and um, information sharing and social responsibility. I want to say a very big thank you to the MasterCard Foundation, to Wellesley College, and to every individual who made this program possible. I hope that through this event, you will get to know the many ways that African women leaders are spearheading change and transformation on the continent. I hope that you also enjoy your time here with our cherry speakers on our beautiful campus with all the snow around. <laughs> now introducing to you one of the women I admire a lot and look up to, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the 14th president of Wellesley College, Dr. Paula Johnson. <laughs> president Johnson is recognized internationally as an innovator who has brought her broad range of experience as a researcher, educator, an expert in healthcare, public health, and health policy to bear in the effort to advance the well being of women. She has been an integral part of this conference and she has assisted with speaker selections and has provided guidance every step of the way in organizing this event. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my president, Dr. Paula Johnson. Sandra, thank you so much. Uh, you clearly represent the best of Wellesley. Um, I am so honored to convene today's conference, and I just want to say happy International Women's Day. Um, you've braved the snow, and we are just thrilled to see you here. Um, I want to welcome distinguished guests from across the African continent, including our esteemed speakers, our expert moderators and facilitators, and of course, all of you, the participants. It's a privilege to host this first-of-a-kind conference in the United States, and I extend greetings on behalf of the entire Wellesley community. I want to offer a special word of thanks to Sandra Ohimen Amponsa, who you just met, and all of our MasterCard Foundation scholars, especially those who are co-facilitators co-facilita and all those who are working and volunteering in many other ways. At Wellesley, we have the good fortune to be joined by 14 current MasterCard scholars representing eight countries across Africa. These scholars' voices, their perspectives and ideas contribute greatly to our learning environment and enrich our community. I want to express our deep gratitude to our partner in organizing this conference, the extraordinary team at the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program, especially Rita Roy, President and CEO of the MasterCard Foundation, and joining us today, Anne Miles, who I think is on her way, uh, Director of Thought Leadership and Innovation, Shona uh, Bazanson, um, Senior Program Manager for Education and Learning, and Karen Meyer, Associate Program Manager for Education and Learning, and Ivy Mawai, Program Manager. Our partnership with the MasterCard Foundation has brought us together with robust cross-campus collaboration to support African scholars and to nurture their leadership skills. We are proud to be the only women's college to partner in this way with the MasterCard Foundation. Wellesley shares the program's dedication to educating young women. 70% of all of the Foundation's scholars are women, 
and we applaud the very important work of the foundation to provide their scholars with the intellectual and technical skills that they need to become transformative leaders. I also want to say how fortunate we are to have Mome Afon Yelbert Sahi uh, as our Master of Ceremonies today, um, who will serve uh, until Joey Cole joins us. Um, I know we are in tremendously wonderful hands. I also want to thank Secretary Madeleine Albright, Wellesley Class of 1959, who narrated that powerful video that you just watched. And she's fought throughout her life and her career for the rights of women on a global scale. Secretary Albright's support of the college and for our students has always been so important. She is truly beloved, and we are so lucky and so honored to have her lend her voice quite literally as we begin this important conference. It's also an honor to have Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs with us, representing Secretary Albright from the Albright Stonebridge Group. And thank you to Hunja Laskin Kenner, class of 1988, and her husband, Jeffrey Kenner. Hunja and Jeffrey, your generosity has contributed to making this conference truly special. And I know we will await the Kenner Lecture, uh, which is going to be given by President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf with great anticipation. And we keep our fingers crossed for her arrival today in the snow. Um, and finally, I want to thank Karen Zafonti Pabone, Director of Wellesley College's Slater International Center, and Elizabeth Siwo, MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program Coordinator, for their tireless efforts and their leadership. You and your team have brought us all together here, uh, together today, and you have helped make this historic conference a reality. So please help me thank Karen and Elizabeth. So as I looked back on the history of um, Wellesley and a focus on Africa, I learned that it was almost 60 years ago that Wellesley hosted a symposium on Africa that brought international experts to campus to illuminate the continent for a largely American audience. And I want to say that it's, it's interesting because I looked at who was here um, Ralph Bunch was here, um, but without a doubt, the vast majority of participants were men. And there was really no discussion of African women's leadership. Today's conference gives us a long needed opportunity, one that could not be happening without all of you. When the idea was first raised that Wellesley could host the African Women's Leadership Conference, the initial response was one of a true moment of clarity as the world's premier women's college inspired by the prospect of bringing together some of the most influential voices in African women's leadership, we were truly moved. And as an institution of higher learning, we have a long history of educating women who will make a difference in the world of empowering women, <coughs> excuse me, to take on the most pressing challenges. It just made perfect sense. And of course, the idea even resonated more when we decided to launch this conference on International Women's Day. Today, by convening leaders from education and politics, health and technology, entertainment and law, we honor the limitless potential of women to shape and to change our world, particularly those from Africa. And I think we shine a light on the many ways that women enrich our society and advance progress, from the unsung women who safeguard and strengthen families and communities, to the more public leaders who span every field, to all the women who create, communicate, and organize, who persist and persevere, and who seek a new world in ways large and small. To me, this is what International Women's Day, and quite frankly, every day, should recognize, along, of course, with the essential rights and dignity of all women. 
I am glad that all of us here can honor this special day by launching an African Women's Leadership Conference that I believe will set a standard for many more to come. As we conceived of what a groundbreaking conference could and would accomplish, we were guided by our deep belief in women of Africa and all that they have already accomplished and how they are inspiring the next generation. To that end, we are exceedingly fortunate to welcome the powerful and widely admired speakers and presenters here today, including our renowned keynote speakers, and as I mentioned earlier, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of Liberia and Nobel Laureate, Kenyan educator, feminist, and social activist, Kikenya Nataya, and Kansime Ann, Ugandan comedian and actor known as African Queen of Comedy, and Dr. Agnes Benwahu, Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity and the former Health Minister of Rwanda. These women, along with many other truly outstanding speakers, tell the complex and rich story of African women's leadership, a story that, of course, represents hundreds and thousands of stories of women from many different African countries and cultures. And that diversity is something that we also must recognize and learn from throughout the next two days. With recognition, we also seek a, deep, a deeper understanding of the challenges African women leaders face and the need for productive strategies to address them. The conference will accomplish this by looking at women's leadership through the lens of four key leadership competencies. Confidence, creativity, courage, and resilience. I want to repeat those again. Confidence, creativity, courage, and resilience. The wealth of expertise, wisdom, and experience, the voices we will hear remind us of two important facts that the countries of Africa are producing transformative leaders and that these leaders are critical in educating women and inspiring young women both in Africa and around the world. The MasterCard Foundation in conjunction with Wellesley Slater International Center and others has published a report on women's transformative leadership in Africa. The report finds that talented youth of Africa have extraordinary potential to become transformative leaders. But it acknowledges that women in Africa face particularly high barriers to becoming leaders, including both social and cultural barriers due to their gender. Young women experience barriers due to their gender and age, challenges, and the report reminds us that they are not unique to Africa. The report finds that existing programs for leadership development for these young women likely reach fewer than 250 women per year, and this highlights what is truly a great need. As part of the study, the report interviewed 30 women leaders in Africa. Here's what these women had in common. Despite their divergent experiences, the report reads, each of the women profiled has distinguished herself in her career and helped to transform the society and or economy of her country and region. Each shared a keen passion to make her country uh, a, an extraordinary um, vehicle in terms of their leadership for change while demonstrating independence of thought and ability to do much with little. These leaders emphasize the importance of equality, relevant education for their advancement, including the need for mentors and role models and the need to build lifelong peer networks. This is indeed what we believe this conference will offer. So today, in closing, I hope that your experience over the course of the next two days is one that provokes new ideas, expands your view, and motivates you to move forward with purpose and clarity. And most importantly, I hope your time connects you with a larger community and that you will take with you connections and these relationships that you can further build and that these relationships will further sustain you 
in the work that lies ahead for all of us. We have a rare opportunity to engage with and learn from some of the world's most remarkable women change makers and path breakers through, uh, and thought leaders and scholars. They offer persuasive, powerful evidence of what we have long believed, that the surest way to change the world for better is through educating and empowering women. So thank you, and I look forward to sharing these next extraordinary couple of days with you. We will now have um, the dancers and musicians from our student performance group, Jan Valu. And we are so proud, um, Jan Valu, to have you take part in today's program. <laughs> 